the new channel. The new channel. Hashtag, Hashtag TNC, TNC now. now. The views, the views opinions, opinions, and insights expressed, expressed in the following shows are those are of the hosts, host, producers, 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 guests, guests and, viewers. and viewers. They do not, they do necessarily, not necessarily reflect, reflect the, position the position of the channel. Of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the new channel. Our passion transforms a community that sees all things new. I am Alpha Sanford and I'm streaming live from Boston, Massachusetts. Good morning, good evening, Mabuhai. Welcome to Once a Teacher, Always a Teacher. Hello, everybody. How are you again? I'm so glad that you are here with me on this wonderful, wonderful day. You know, today's show is a bit special for me in the sense that um, one of my former college classmates is joining me today. And what's extraordinary about the show is that this former classmate of mine stayed in the education field almost immediately after college. So his education journey is almost similar to my journey in such a way that immediately after college, we both went into the field of education. Um, there's a little bit of twist right there for him, but we're going to get to know the little twist right there, but everything is still related in the field of education. Now, many of you know that my education journey has mostly been in the public school. Um, ever since when I was in elementary school, high school, college, I went to public schools. And then my journey here in the United States is mostly teaching and leading in public school setting. So today's special guest, it's gonna be a little bit different from my ordinary um, interaction and my ordinary experience of being in the public school setting. Today's guest, He's going to open up our minds on his experiences and his journey teaching, leading at one of the finest private schools in Manila. Um, my understanding is that he has been in this private school for at least 16 years. 
Imagine that, 16 years in the same institution. So I feel like if you had already moved past that 10th year and then 15th year, you're almost a legend in that institution, right? So I'd love to get his insights, how he became and how he is staying at one of Manila's most finest or finest schools or private schools in Manila. So without further ado, let me actually bring to you my former college classmate from the University of the Philippines, Diliman College of Education. Let's bring in Mr. Harold Jokno. Harold. Hello, Alpha. Hi, Ms. Alpha. Good morning. Good Thank you for, for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you for having, uh, for being with us, actually. I know, you know, you're very busy, uh, but you made time for us to be with us today. So, salamat. Salamat, Bog. So, salamat din. Back. Salamat din. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, um, let's talk about you um, as a teacher uh, at a private school. Let's start with... How long have you really been a teacher in the private school setting? Um, okay, actually, you were correct in saying that Yay! I've been in this uh, private school. Um, am I really allowed to, uh, to say it? But yes, yes, I, I've been with LaSalle Green Hills for more than six year, 16 years already. Amazing. And uh, you're correct in saying that. Um, yes, this has become my vocation, and I really chose to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, although I, I I have had experiences with other private schools before, but this is what I call as my home now. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm uh, yeah. But but all in all, it's been almost twenty years in the education industry. Angaling. And, uh, you know, I really salute you, Harold, for staying in the education field for this long. Yeah. I only know a few people who really stay in the pub. I'm sorry. See, I, I say public. <laughs> I only know a few people who stay in the education field for this long. So, nakaka inspire. You're, you're inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's not an easy ride, I, I must say. But of course, you know, uh, in, in the Philippines, well, right now, um, we've, we've been experiencing a lot of problems in the education mm -hmm. sector. And I know it's, it's getting a bit tiring mm -hmm. or tiresome for, for most uh, teachers, especially in the public schools. But, but you see... Um, I don't know if you'd agree, but but teaching is more than a profession. It's it's more right. than a job. So yeah, staying in one really requires a lot of a lot of patience and a lot of dedicate of dedication. Right. So what brought you Talaga to teaching? Um back in college, I, I wasn't really keen on teaching. I mean, um I, I really wanted to shift to other uh, colleges back then. Uh -huh. um, but as days went by, I, I began to, to see myself in the classroom and, you know, being able to make a difference mm -hmm. in, in children's uh, lives. And also, I, I see that there's so much things to be done in the education sector. And I think... I, well, back then I felt the need that you know I, I was needed. I mean, I, I I thought that I could make a difference, uh, and and I want I want to to see that happen. That's okay. why, siguro that that was the challenge for for myself then. No, uh, even though I'm not really well starting out back in college, I I wasn't really keen on staying in the education sector. I I eventually found myself loving it. So there. Um, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's really good. Now, why private school? How did you end up uh, staying and teaching and now leading uh, at a private school? 
Um, I guess out of luck. Okay. Uh, I actually started teaching in the public school, uh, Miss Alpha. Okay. However, I was basically a struggling professional then, so I'm not gonna lie to you. It's mostly for financial reasons, and and back okay. then yes. I was trying to look for greener pastors. Mm-hmm. Um, in the early 2000s, uh, the the private schools pay better. Way better mm. than the public school. Unlike mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. you know, you see a certain shift, uh, a certain paradigm shift happening because uh, the public schools they they give much more compensation, and mm-hmm. that's why we now see private schools, private school teachers being pirated or, or to being transferred or choosing to transfer to the public school. But in my case, I guess I just fell in love with the whole school, uh, and, and it's mission vision because la salle is mm-hmm. is really big on community and and that's what i really wanted uh mm-hmm. i want to be part of a community of a certain community and mm-hmm. i saw how they are relating well with community partners so i i like that i guess that's the the main thing that appealed to me i i guess well that's so, pretty good <laughs> yeah that's pretty good. I heard some things from you that uh, uh, makes me think. I heard the word home. I heard about oh, community. Cool. And mm-hmm. I heard uh, something about the culture of La Salle Green Hills that has really yeah, yeah. made you stay there. So um, for educators who are still, let's just say, testing the waters, right? Um, what will be your uh, advice to them in trying to find their home or their, their niche when it comes to teaching? Oh, that's a tricky one, Alpha. Yeah. Um, because, <clears throat> well, based from my experience, it, it was rather turbulent. I mean, I, I've been to, um, uh, to two schools already. One is public. One is private, and then I landed here in in, in La Salle. Um, I guess my advice would be to, one, test the waters, meaning during their first three years, try to get a sense of of how it will be, well, on a professional level, on a a personal level, if things will be really, you know, a, a perfect fit for you. But if you see that, um, if you notice that you've been really um, doing so much effort, exerting so much effort into, say, fitting in or trying to find yourself or trying to, you know, get a sense of professional accomplishment, then I guess, and, and that that school is not giving you all of that, then I guess it, it's it's better that you leave. So it's really tricky and it's really a matter of of, of dedication. Uh, there's also the other school of thought, kasi na, you know, uh, other teachers might say, na, no, you choose, you choose your your home, you choose where you want to be, and and also that is very true, you know, even though the things may become very problematic for other teachers, but still they choose to be there, for for some other reason or for any other reason, then I guess they can simply call it as you know home, so. Yon. Um, yeah, it, it's rather tricky. May, medyo mahirap. <laughs> Ang hirap na question mo, Ms. Alpha. <laughs> no, actually, it's uh, it's almost uh, like luck plus hard work. Yeah. And almost yeah. your dedication and your love to the students, I think, is mm-hmm. what I'm hearing. Um yeah. And it's important to point out and to start sharing how uh, an educator like you um, has stayed in the same school setting and uh, in the education field for so long because statistics show that uh, the first three to five years of teaching, a lot of the teachers actually end up leaving the education field. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah, so I could, in fact, I could very well relate to that, Miss Alpha. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, tell me. I have more. had, yeah, I have, I have had experiences like that. Uh, I mean, I was in a 
a quarter life crisis back then mm-hmm. and i really yeah. i really had that that um uh, moments at a crossroads where you know where i was really asking myself if this was the the right vocation for me it was it, if it was really the right career for me i mean mm-hmm. if la salle would really you know give me that fulfillment that i've been looking for so mm-hmm. yes it, it came to that point and and um until you know i instead of dwelling into the instead of wallowing <laughs> in in yeah. the whole um what if scenarios i i decided to make something for myself um i i i ventured into different um responsibilities mm-hmm. like for example being members of different committees mm-hmm. in the institution being more involved in the university in in the in the community what else i was also elected as a faculty president nice. for um union slash association so uh there so i i guess it's it's really a matter of choice when when you are at that crossroad during your early years of teaching and you're you know you're trying to find yourself if you're if you're trying to weigh things professionally and personally i guess you really have to you really have to um first accept the fact that you know there are realities out there that we cannot change no in the, in the in the education sector sorry if i'm if i'm being serious right now because i'm coming from the philippine perspective you know It's things good. are different here yeah. things are good. different here um teachers are really underpaid um but you see um given all that i guess teachers will really have to um to exert more effort to be more patient in trying to sense to make sense of things uh but yes i i would i totally agree uh during the early years of of teaching of, of this profession i must say those are the most difficult and trying times yeah wow and you made it through <laughs> you know you got yeah. through that right uh uh-uh. so um i'm curious uh, harold Um how is it like to actually teach at a private school and let me just put at one of Manila's finest private schools <laughs> uh, so those people who don't really have any idea how to teach in a private school first what do they need to do in order to teach there what are the skills that they need to have and um like the overall general thought of becoming a teacher at a private school okay so um well let's start with the very basics well i i think as for the requirements it's just like any other school requirement or pre-employment requirements but in uh, la salle we give premium to masters and and phd units or degrees so there's an add on to that and also um it's it's a good thing that you you um you mentioned something about finest or being prestigious but because i'm not going to deny it la salle will always be synonymous to you know being privileged or being for the affluent but it's not entirely the case i i mean we have scholars we have scholar students um we also have students from the middle class um they're not entirely you know from the elite families but yes uh, i guess it's there's extra work if you're if you want to be if you want to stay in a in a private school like this because number one, the attitudes are different the the student um the student behavior is a lot different um you have to understand that you know they're coming from different realities in life what could be difficult for you may not you know be difficult or problematic for them uh what is a problem to them could not really be you know applicable to your uh experience so there there's a sense of um connection you have to you have to first learn how to 
deal with with these kinds of students and i i'm not really saying that they're different but their realities are different i mean these are mostly from you know um uh, rich families uh privileged upbringing so i guess that's the the, the, the challenge that i saw that you know um i i've had my share of of brats <laughs> before you know um and i really want to to be able to reach out to them and you know uh, and to to open their minds to more realities uh i started out as a soci teacher social science teacher and i guess that's the the challenge that i that i wanted to take you know um to change their mindset but yes for those who have no idea what it takes to be or what it takes uh, to teach in a private school yeah that's basically the same requirement and also you have to have a good um, um command of the english language uh dahil hirap ang mga batang ito sa Filipino. <laughs> uh, and it's it's it still holds true even up to this day um, their first language in, in in their homes is english so there wow uh, that's, i feel like i just opened a mm. tiny window in my mind about you know private school especially at one of Manila's finest, you know, like how is it like to be a teacher over there? I love what you said about connection, right? So um, I heard you need to be able to speak very well in English, but I think the connection piece, the relatable piece, and I guess where I would like to ask is, what would be your thought in terms of, uh, let's just say, a regular middle class or somebody who's just starting out who may not have uh, the same reality as the students at the private school? How would they start to connect um, and still being authentic to themselves? How, yeah, how, how would they build that connection with the students? Um number one i guess well based from experience uh what i did then was to first observe uh where they're coming from their experiences and it it really takes um it really takes some time to to fully comprehend what's going on in, in you know at the back of their minds but when you listen when the teacher listens to the students they understand better and and i guess with understanding comes more connection more harmonious relationship more relevance uh, and and i uh you you'd be able to connect more to the to the students um there are things that are like non-negotiable like for example socioeconomic status i mean you can't really you can't really change that but you see how they view the classroom how they view your topics you know there's you know there's some flexibility in that and and once you get to to relate to them well and under and and try to um how should i put it um when you've finally made it you know uh to their consciousness when you're able to do that to touch their hearts i guess things will 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 you know will will be smooth will be a lot smoother because uh, you'll you'll see change happening in in your not only in your everyday pedagogy or teaching mm -hmm. but also with how you communicate with them mm. um am i being vague i'm sorry no no <laughs> it's actually very good. i'm being very big yeah <laughs> it, it's very good i feel like i just transported myself into your shoes because 
in uh, a few aspects of my life, I can somehow relate into what you are saying. So the different sort of reality of some other people. So yeah. this is great. Yeah. So um, without really uh, sharing some personal information, but generally talking, uh, can you share the benefits, including maybe the pay range of being <laughs> a private school teacher? Um, okay. Uh, I guess our only advantage, uh, yeah, compared to the public school is that, mm -hmm. number one, there could be payments to overloads. Okay. Like, for example, you're, you're given extra tasks. You know, there's, there's payment attached to it, there, or there's extra compensation. Um, there's also the premium of health care. Mm. So in, in La Salle, um, it doesn't matter if you're, you're simply or if you're just starting out as a teacher, you, give the, you get the same health care benefits as the tenured ones. Uh, and I guess that's, that's not entirely true for, for other private schools as well. So I, I guess there's, there's extra advantage if you're coming from a big school like La Salle. Mm -hmm. I mean, the benefits are 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 good. Mm -hmm. um, our basic rate is at well, currently currently stands competitively at. <laughs> am I allowed to say it? I don't know. But <clears throat> our our basic right now is at thirty thousand. Um, that's that's I I guess that's that's pretty much competitive in in the private school setup and also competitive for. Uh, competitive uh, in comparison with the public school. So what else? Um, there are also other community, and I'm sorry, um, institutional benefits like uh, bonuses and all that I, I heard are not entirely present in other schools or not being given to other schools. So I guess it pays that you're in a big university setup or in a big um, school like La Salle. But uh, yeah, there are, those are the perks that I, that I, you know, off the top of my head. Yeah. You know what? I love how uh, you may be able to get some compensation for the extra load. So that's yeah. extra pay on top of your basic pay. So mm -hmm. If you are masipag, then you know mm. you're able to rack up some more extra money. Yeah, but don't get me wrong; we don't have uh, overtime pay. Okay. Uh, we simply give premium to other responsibilities given to the ah. teacher, okay. and I guess that's what I really like about Lessa. I mean, you know, mm. you're you may be given a lot of responsibilities or extra work, but we do acknowledge the fact that these responsibilities extra responsibilities are on top of your teaching responsibilities mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. should be well compensated so uh mm -hmm. i i hope other schools would eventually you know have that um, mindset <laughs> because yeah. being a teacher is is, is really challenging it, you know it, that it, Deva. <laughs> it, it definitely is so take mm -hmm. me to your typical day at your mm. school. Cuento uh, naman. What's your typical day like? How many caseload do you have? How many students you have? Mm. What's your start day? Do you have a planning time? You, you <clears throat> Okay. Um, well, I, I'm not anymore teaching, no. Uh, I'm in middle mm -hmm. management level already. But mm -hmm. um, our, our typical schedule starts with the, the homeroom. And, and our schedule works on uh, an hour basis, period. Mm -hmm. So per period, there's one hour. And uh, right now, we, we are, we're, we're fully adjusting to the on-site or the face-to-face -face setup. But I usually start my day with the usual routines because there are specific routines that we have to observe from the flag ceremony to uh, the prayers 
to homeroom if you're a, if you're a, a classroom teacher but in my case it's mostly supervision so i go on monitoring i go corridor prefects prefect uh, duties i also make sure that my teachers are complete are well um, if there are absentees, I attend to the substitution. Um, and that's on top of the paperwork. So there. Uh, but but our, our schedule is rather light. Lighter compared to the, the schedule of other schools. Um, we start at 7.30 mm -hmm. and and at uh, two o'clock for the senior high school. Okay. Well, that's for the classes, okay? Yes. Uh, but for the junior high, that's until 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. So there, compared to other schools, yeah, I, I guess we have a more friendly setup here in La Salle, so yeah. Great, so uh, you're now uh, middle level leader it yeah your school. Your high school coordinator yeah. yeah so how does that look like uh how, how is it different from being a teacher versus being let's just say the principal oh okay um and what do you do yeah do you do? <laughs> being at the middle level management it's it's very how should i put it you're in the middle of things. I, I mean, you have to uh, strike a balance between uh, being too teacher leaning and being okay. too, uh, and being, of course, understanding of the administration because you're in the middle, right? So right. we we're always we're always trying to mediate. We're always trying to coordinate whatever the admin would like, you know. For the teachers and for the students, that's where we come in, and and of course, whatever complaints, whatever concerns that the the teachers may have, you know, we accommodate them. We try to screen them. We try to uh, follow them up, and we try to, um, yeah, allay all of these these concerns. So, you're. Being a coordinator being means being stuck in the middle, <laughs> and you always have to strike a balance. But um, I finally got in the hang of it after five years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, compared to the classroom teacher, mm -hmm. you know, the classroom teacher's primary concern is always a student, right? You know, and and classroom management. But but for us, it's all about people management because. Mm -hmm. What I consider now as my students, or 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 because or, or yeah, people under me would would immediately be the teachers. So I deal with teachers now, with adults now, and it, that's much more uh, challenging uh, <laughs> because these are adults, right? So <laughs> there, and I also I also have to um, deal with the administration, the upper administration. So there. Okay. Well, for me, it's it's being stuck in the middle and striking a balance, always. <laughs> so that. Yeah. So, uh, did I hear earlier that that you are union unionized? Do you have a union? Yeah, we have a faculty association, but we okay. haven't really turned it into a union. Mm -hmm. In other La Salle schools, there there are uh, unions. Okay. Uh, present. But in La Salle Green Hills, um, no, we have yet to to turn it into a union. It's merely an association of, of, of faculty. There's also a counterpart for the staff and other personnel. Mm -hmm. They have their own association. But it. it works, yeah, basically like a union anyway. So. Got it. Now, I'm hearing that you're having fun, obviously, in this role. <laughs> But tell me, what's the least favorite part of your job? Or what's your least favorite part of your job? Least favorite part. Least favorite. Um, hmm. OK. This may sound very controversial, but I really <laughs> don't like, um, <clears throat> not, not really you know, 
not really not liking it, but you know, uh -huh. it comes with a job. But you see, um, there's there's dealing with the teacher's most minute concerns, meaning um, there are things that you know that, that are personal. Yeah, and would personal always matters. Come, yeah, personal matters coming to my attention, and I always have to, you know, to to all to also look into that and to always consider that. Um, yeah. I know it comes with a job. I know it's really part of people management, but um, uh, sometimes you all you also have to to weigh things. You know, there are toxic teachers. Okay, I, I won't yeah. deny that. There are difficult teachers. For sure. There are stubborn teachers. So there, um, dealing with them, it comes with the territory, but it's all part of my job. So, of course, I, I do all the management involved. But when you ask me if, if I really like it, of course, you know, that's, that's a at the bottom of my list of, of the most desirable things that I find enjoyable in my job. So <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Harold. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm trying to, to sugarcoat, you know, my, my answer. Okay. No, I, I definitely hear you in terms of <laughs> because you know we all have different personalities. Yeah, and uh, uh, different educators may have different opinions. And there's always two sides of the story. So exactly. as a leader, and in your case, as a middle manager, a coordinator, it's your job to mediate, right? And almost exactly. uh, yeah. be in the middle of these conflict resolution. Because at the end of the day, you are responsible in making sure that the teachers are tending to their job, which is in front of the students. So if they are having some tension. And also, now that you've mentioned conflict resolution, I must mm -hmm. say that's a skill that that you know that should be that should be part of your skill set if you're in this kind of job. Yeah. Because it, it, I don't know if you'd agree in the classroom, the conflict resolution that that you you'd face mm -hmm. on a regular basis would simply be you know students. Be, you know, will be conflicts between students, right? right. Yes. Um, but but things are different in I guess in, in this kind of uh, responsibility. That's or right. Position. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, before we take a break, tell us a very inspiring story that you have as a private school teacher, <clears throat> or right now as a private school administrator um okay i haven't really thought about it but um i have my share of of of, of inspiring stories of of students actually coming up to me um outside school or at least messaging me privately thanking mm -hmm. me for for nice. what i've done or for how much i've I've contributed to their well-being right now. Um, the most recent was last year uh, during the pandemic. Um, he fully became a physician. Nice. Uh, so he really sent me a message thanking me for for the things that you know um, I've done okay, that that helped him to become the the a, a better i i would say a better person that he is right now um he especially thanked me for um opening his mind to to current events mm. to, to the social realities mm -hmm. um and, and i guess when you receive things or affirmations like that you you feel very not only that you you know you feel very fulfilled, mm -hmm. but there's a sense of completeness mm. to your job. I mean, to your to whatever it is that you're doing. I mean, no matter how bad the day is, it will really make your day. It will really 
um, I, I guess you can re you can fully say that okay, my job here is done. I've accomplished my task. I was able to you know affect at least one person. Okay, and and whatever I did before made a difference to him now. So yeah, um, nakakatuwa yung mga ganon. I I I I appreciate things like that. Mm -hmm. And they don't really come in droves. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are only select students who would who would really take the time to personally message you and to personally thank you but mm -hmm. um yes as educators that's all you can you can you can ask for right some kind yeah. of um uh, affirmation like that so you nag nagpapasalamat siya dahil dahil um i was instrumental in in mm -hmm. his uh well-being wow and, yung mga advocacies na gusto daw niyang gawin, magagawa na niya ngayon, you know, uh, healing the poor, being, you know, more in the, more out there in the community, uh, mm -hmm. doing what he loves most, you know, mm -hmm. being a doctor, so something like that, yeah. Wow, nakakadaba um, naman ng puso niyan, Harold. It's, uh, it's so nice to hear. Yeah, very, very nice to hear. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that inspiring story. So when we come back, I'd love our viewers to really get to know you, Naman, as a, uh, a textbook author or your journey as okay. a, uh, is it a publishing author? Is that the right term? Publishing author. Okay. So let's talk about that when we come back. All right, sure. folks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back. Juan Lu and his puppets face to face with special guests Makata Tawanan, Jess Box, and the Lunaria Marionette Show. Salita, alam na tito ano kung mala ako, nagsasalita ka ng isa. <laughs> kung wala ako, wala kang masusuot. Kung wala ako, wala kang nakakain. <laughs> November 13, Sunday, 7 p.m., at the La Verdad Auditorium in Apalit, Pampanga. Buy your tickets now and see you soon, face to face.
The new channel is an online alternative new media, a platform of online shows for people on the go. Please watch all our shows as seen on screen. Imagine having your own show, your own playlist, your own content, but we make it easier for you. TNC aims to transform the lives of our viewers through engaging, authentic, and original content. Our channel is a responsible global 24 over 7 platform that showcases Filipino talent, global influencers, cultural intelligence, and ingenuity. Please continue to support Once a Teacher, Always a Teacher on select Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch live or on replay via Facebook or YouTube. You can also follow us on IG, listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just search hashtag TNC now. For sponsorships, please email now at the new channel.com or send us a DM. Enjoy these life changing shows because we made them for you. All right, folks, welcome back. I'm hoping that you are taking down notes in terms of teaching and being in a private school setting. So I'm going to bring back our guest, Mr. Harold Jokno. Mr. Jokno. Hello. Hi. Yeah, welcome back again, Harold. Thank you again. Yes. <laughs> So we left off earlier with uh, your uh, journey about being a textbook author, right? So tell us, how did you get into that? What do you do as a published textbook author? Okay, so how did I get into this uh, gig or this uh, stint? Um, I started out with a different publishing company i I, okay. I won't say it but mm -hmm. as a as a content uh writer okay and then and, and the 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 work that i mostly did back then was for the ebook versions nice and then um i i met fellow authors mm -hmm. who eventually referred to me to the publishing house so um it started out five, six years ago, I believe, or more wow. than that. Yeah. yeah. And then I, right now, I, I was able to publish two uh, textbooks, um, both in Araling Panlipunan or in, in okay. social studies. Yeah. Um, one is for grade school and the other one's for, for um, economics in, in uh, high school. So there. Um, yes. Public nice. publication that that's I, I do that um, on the sides, and that um, it, it it also comes with certain perks. Like for example, mm -hmm. you get to visit provinces, and um, not simply for marketing, but but mm -hmm. also for seminars for teachers. Mm -hmm. So I I give seminar workshops for teachers as well as part of the whole deal as a, as part of the whole package. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So um, if I were a student in the Philippines, I might be using and reading one yeah, of them. Yeah, might books. be. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, a, uh, that's almost another world of really reaching the minds of our students. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess... I, I, I would always want to stay true to what I believe in. Like, for example, if if what made me stay in La Salle was, was that challenge to affect more people inside the classroom, yeah. I saw this opportunity as being able to, to reach other people from, from different parts of the Philippines. Not people pala, different students mm -hmm. in different parts of the Philippines. Being able, you know, to, to give them quality work and, and something to read, you know, that, that they could possibly enjoy or possibly learn from unbiased, uh, research-based, and, and, you know, really quality work. I, I want to give them that. So 
through public through publications like this, I, you know, I, I'm I'm grateful to be given that opportunity. So yeah. <laughs> wow. Maybe one day when I go back to the Philippines, I will find Araling Panlipunan or social studies or economics books, and I'm gonna ask you to sign it from me. That'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you because you know you'd be buying that from the bookstores anyway so thank you very much <laughs> oh yes yeah you're welcome all right so um you may have some students and colleagues who may be watching but to your students who may be watching uh <clears throat> any word of advice for them uh okay well First off, I would like to say hi, you know, because it's been a while. I, I mm -hmm. know you're all grown ups now. You have your own families already. <clears throat> but I sincerely hope that you're doing just fine and getting by well, especially after this pandemic. Yeah. But um, I also hope that you're a man or a woman of character. I mean, not just for your own families, but to other people as well. So... Yeah, hit me up. I, I'm in social media anyway, so let's talk. But I, I really want to, to hear from you guys. Uh, and I again, I sincerely hope that you're doing fine and you know, you're know you doing the best that you can in whatever it is that you're doing now. And of course, you know, being able to, to help other people, that's perfect. <laughs> so yeah. That's great. You mentioned about you are on social media. So if any of our viewers would like to get in touch with you and would like to ask more questions regarding um, stepping into the private school setting or maybe becoming a published textbook author, how may they contact you? What's your uh, social media handle? Um. I, I I only have one Facebook anyway, so you can easily find me. That's Harold uh, Jokno. Um, I also am uh, present in Instagram, okay. <laughs> but you'll you'll mostly see pictures there. So that, that, that's you know rather personal. But but sure, if you can find me there, you know I I can easily answer and respond to your queries. Um, I may have. I may have to double check the security settings that I have set for that Facebook account, but sure, yes, I am free to, to answer your queries if you have any. Great, thank you, Harold. And before we go, do you have any inspiring stories to share to our viewers? Um, inspiring stories. Um... I guess more. Uh, it's not really an inspiring story, but but an an, an appeal uh, to mm -hmm. the teachers, because uh, being in this profession is is no joke. Okay, um, it really takes some some courage and and some determination to fully make this a choice, because more than anything, you know you'll choose to be where you end, diba? Um, I forgot the Mao Zedong saying that, um, I, I don't know. Anyway, you, you bloom where you are planted, something like that. Okay? Yes. I guess it's not really from Mao Zedong, but, but it's really a, a common adage. But you bloom yeah. where you are planted, right? Mm -hmm. So my appeal should be to, to teachers to, number one, to not give up. On teaching or or on this education sector, if you're in the Philippines, do not give up. Uh, given all the bureaucracies and the problems in the system, mm -hmm. do not mm -hmm. simply give up because the students need you. Yeah. <laughs> the students need you. Um, yes, you may be bored. You may be challenged by the structure, by the system, by the schools that you're in. But the, at the end of the day, it's not really, the, you know, the, the service that we provide um, is really for the students. And I don't know if you're familiar with this, Alpha. There, there was this viral video of a really tired teacher. I think that's from the U.S., if not mm, China. Okay. okay. The, there's this uh, really tired teacher 
um, walking in the corridor and, and he, he's um, entering his classroom. But mm -hmm. as soon as he enters that door, that tired face of his mm. uh, changes. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he, he simply gives out the widest and the warmest smile that he could muster because it's for the kids. Mm. So mm -hmm. I guess that's my appeal. And I guess that's the, that's the mandate. And also that's, the, that's how we are as a teacher. You know, uh, we do things for the kids. We do, this, we do these things for the students. And it, it is second nature to us. Kapag, mm -hmm. alam yan, uh, we may be tired. We may be you know, all spent for the day. But once we enter the classroom, we're all smiles. We're all giving them the, the optimism that they need. And, and that's my appeal to, to teachers, to not give up. Okay? Um, we're wired this way. <laughs> so uh, yun lang. Talagang uh, patience lang siguro at, at uh, determination. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let me just repeat what I heard from you. Uh, bloom where you're planted. Bloom where you're planted. Correct. Yeah. Don't give up uh, because we're wired this way. And at the end of the day, <laughs> it is all for the students. And it's a way of uh, maybe leaving a legacy for the future generation. Napakaganda. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, napakaganda. That's why I really appreciate you doing this for the Teachers Alpha. Okay? Oh, thank uh, you. You inspiring so many teachers out there. Mm -hmm. I, I really hope that, you know, they, they, they follow you and they watch you because this, this thing that you're doing for the teachers, mm -hmm. it makes a lot, you know, a lot difference and a lot, you know, more encouraging. It makes... You know, it makes being in this profession a lot more encouraging, a little, a little bit more fun. So thank you. Uh, I, really, I really love what you're doing. Oh, thank you, thank too. Thank you for this show. Yeah. Yeah. So it's my pleasure, Harold. And thank you for sharing with us all your stories, those wonderful strategies and tips of becoming and staying in the education field for all of these years. Oh, my gosh. You are a rare, extraordinary person. So thank you. Thanks for your service. Thank you yeah. for the kind words, Miss Alpha. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Harold. So anyway, I can't believe it. It's uh, close to an hour already. Um, my gratitude again to our guest for today, Mr. Harold Jokno, for giving us... Uh, um, a wonderful window to his life as a teacher and an up, uh, I'm sorry, as a teacher and as a middle, middle administrator at uh, one of Manila's finest private schools. So I hope you were able to learn something new from today's guest. And if you were inspired, or at least if you learned something new from this episode, Please leave a comment uh, below this uh, show or and share the show to somebody that you know who needs to hear and be inspired to stay in the education field. With that, I want to thank all of you for your time. I want to thank all of you who are listening to the replay or watching to the replay of the show. Thank you. And I hope to see you again and continue what you're doing and inspire the world. See you again and thank you. Bye for now.